Hi, my name is Robin Townsell. I'm a student at William Carey University, currently enrolled in the master's program to obtain my master's in nursing education. As part of my class requirements, I'm going to be teaching a lecture today on the nursing process. The nursing process is the foundation of nursing. It is the, the beginning to all that we do as nurses. In the nursing process, we assess, diagnose, plan, implement, and evaluate our interventions to see if they were effective. And if they were not effective, we restart the process to obtain better outcomes for our patients. So let's get started. The objective for this lecture is to have students learn foundational nursing principles to develop, to develop critical thinking. Students will participate in the scenario provided to apply learned nursing principles. Students will demonstrate the knowledge obtained by effectively identifying and solving the problems as provided. The nursing process is the foundation of nursing. It is how we identify problems with our patients and develop care plans to ensure that they obtain proper treatment and get better. The goal is for our patients to get better and to go home. If we don't make the right decisions or if we don't properly identify issues, then we are failing at our jobs and our patients don't get better. They end up getting readmitted to the hospitals or worse, they die. This is why the nursing process is so important. The first step of the nursing process is assessment. This includes a head to toe assessment, vital signs, asking questions, conversating with your patient, obtaining a history. The second step of the nursing process is diagnosing. Based on what we assess, we can determine what problems need to be addressed and if there are multiple problems, what's the priority? The third step is planning. We develop a plan to fix the problem we identified in the assessment. This is the action, whether it's sitting the patient up or putting them on oxygen or providing suction. The fourth step is implementation. We do what we planned. So that's putting the nasal cannula in their nose. Did it work? This is what leads to the fifth and final step, evaluation. Were my interventions effective? If not, we start this process over again. If so, I have now expanded my clinical judgment and will be able to identify similar problems in the future with future patients and correct these problems. Thus, this increases my knowledge base, my clinical judgment, and my confidence as a nurse. So let's use the scenario to learn how to properly apply the nursing process. We have a CHF patient who has been admitted. We walk into the room and we can see that they are short of breath. We obtain vital signs and we actually count their respirations. Their SpO2 is 85% on room air and their respirations are 30. The nasal cannula that we gave the patient is laying on the floor and the patient is slouched down in the bed. What do we do first using the nursing process? Well, vital signs and walking into the room and seeing them was part of the first step we assessed. We saw with our eyes that the patient is slouched down in the bed. We saw that their vital signs were abnormal. Their oxygen level is 86% on room air. That would mean that we need to get them back to a normal level. If we know that normal level is between 95 and 100, then that would mean that they are pretty, pretty low. So, what we need to do as the nurse is to implement what we plan. So if you correctly identified that we need to sit this patient up, you are correct. We're going to pull the patient up in bed, raise the head of the bed, 
so that they were able to properly oxygenate and then put the nasal cannula in their nose. This is going to give them the oxygen they need. If you didn't answer that you should pull the patient up first, my question is, if you put the nasal cannula in their nose without sitting them up first, how will they be able to fully expand their lungs if they're not in an optimal position to do so? Next, we're going to put the nasal cannula in that patient's nose and then we're going to tell them, take deep breaths, deep, even, slow breaths to get their oxygenation up. We're going to put the oxygen monitor on their finger and we're going to wait to see if this works. If the nasal cannula is at two liters and their, their oxygen level is still only at 87 after we have sat them up, and put the nasal cannula in their nose, we use the nursing process again to assess that, okay, we still need to do something further. So now we diagnose another problem. Their, their oxygen level still has not come up where we need it to be. So now we make a plan. I need to get them up because again, Normal range is 95 to 100 percent. We're going to increase the oxygen on the nasal cannula by turning the oxygen dial. And then we wait. This is the implementation. We've turned it up to about four liters. As we evaluate the patient, we hope to see that their oxygen level comes up. If it does not, we start the process again. Okay, I assess or I can see that their oxygen level is still not doing any better. What's my next step? I've made the diagnosis that the problem is they're still short of breath. My plan, I'm going to move further. Do this patient, does this patient need a face mask or do they need a non-rebreather mask? So now I take off the nasal cannula, I apply a face mask or a non-rebreather mask. Once we pick preferably the non-rebreather mask because it's the most effective way to get their oxygen level where we need it to be a lot quicker, it's a lot more effective. We put this patient on a non-rebreather mask and we turn the oxygen all the way to 15. The patient is now breathing at 95 and we wait a few more seconds. They're now at 99. Okay, we can see and we can evaluate that our intervention so far has been successful. So what do we do at this point? Well, the nursing process starts over. I assess that my patient is now stable, but we know that we cannot leave them on a non-rebreather mask for a long amount of time. So what do we do in this situation? Once the patient has stabilized, we can then turn the oxygen down. We can slowly start to wean them off of the non-rebreather mask and slowly decrease that oxygen until they get back to the prescribed amount by the provider. So if that level is two, if that level is four, we slowly decrease it by watching their oxygen level and waiting a few minutes. And then, once we get to the prescribed amount, we can let them relax. We can just watch them. You're going to continue to monitor them. Again, the nursing process is ongoing. This is what we do as nurses. This is 
the foundation for us. So that way we know, all right, this patient is getting better or this patient is getting worse. So if you come back and you see that this patient's oxygen level is on the prescribed amount, they still have the nasal cannula in their nose, and they're still sitting up in bed, but their oxygen saturation level is no longer where it needs to be, then we start this process over again. I've made the assessment. I've diagnosed that their oxygen saturation level is now at 86%. They're still on the two liters that the doctor prescribed for them. Now what do I need to do? We now make another plan. The plan is I need to message the doctor. What, is the, what are we asking the doctor for? We need to see if we need to be getting some ABGs on this patient to figure out why they're not oxygenating where, where they need to be. But in the meantime, we need to be putting the non-rebreather mask on, turning the oxygen back up so that that way they can be oxygenating while we're trying to determine what's going on further with them. This will be the beginning of more processes, but we always, always, always start with the nursing process first. You're going to assess, always assess your patient. You identify the problem with your patient after you've assessed them. That means if you put a stethoscope on them and you hear that they have crackles in there, okay, the problem is they rattling. I need to call respiratory, get a breathing treatment for them, implement that plan. They gave them the breathing treatment. Did the breathing treatment work? How did their lungs sound after? And that is my lecture on the nursing process. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful for you.